um, they bankrupted our nation and whereby under our false leaders, no one's been prosecuted for the bankrupting through fraud, uh, which totally undermines our whole system of jurisprudence. Um, asking our leaders now to correct the problem would be like asking criminals to arrest themselves, um, then judge themselves and judge their own trials and then send themselves to prison and not going to happen, okay? Therefore, unless we the people or the military do it, they're going to continue on in this orgy of Sodom, basically, that's going on inside our government, why they're all tied to sex scandals and perversions and everything. It's because that's what the, is in operating your government not right now. Not good, hardworking kids and people who believe in America and our democracy, but basically criminals. And, you know, the more you don't believe me, just let it accumulate. You're seeing it happen so fast before your eyes that you almost feel overwhelmed and like there's nothing to do. But the platform I'm going to propose certainly will get it all corrected almost overnight and put this country in a whole new wonderful uh, direction. Um, but first, uh, what we're going to have to do um, is we're going to have to throw the rascals out, so to speak. And when we try them, those that are convicted, we need to seize all their assets. So if Halliburton was in it, grab their assets. That comes back to the people. If Bank of America was involved in fraud and conspiracy, all of that comes back to the people. You know, the account holders get what's theirs, but the top gets replaced with new people. The other people serve prison sentences and need bailouts, but they need them from bail bondsmen, not, not from the American people this time. Um, and remember, recover, RICO and recover. The goal here is to recover the stolen monies in ill-gotten war profiteering and oil profiteering gains. And if they're found guilty of these crimes, the law allows us to recover all that, especially if it was a RICO criminal conspiracy, which, you know, there's beyond overwhelming evidence. So, uh, these principles are basic, fundamental principles of our democracy to try people who are accused and alleged of crimes where there's evidence and overwhelming evidence that the crimes have been committed. So, um, without these principles, our country's lost. Um, lost to a tyrannous coup that will never vote itself out or try itself and therefore the nation can only sink further despite the lies by your dictators who call you sheeple for believing their bs and lies and who they feel too feeble to stop these people from their crimes the people feel that we can't stop because it's our government, but we can, and those rights are there. And all we need to do is demand justice. Where's Eric Holder? I mean, Eric Holder. Uh, you know, where's Obama, Mr. You know, Letter of the Law Harvard guy, to to just try the people and see: Are you guilty or are you not? What are you afraid of? If there's nothing to be afraid of, then these should be easy trials for Bush, Cheney, Obama, Holder, etc because there's very serious crimes, so I'm sure they got very good answers. Um, my first order, and I'm going to presume that I'm your commander-in-chief when I give this order, because I am going to formally declare war against our government. And so as commander-in-chief at that point, and I will do it with or without Congress's approval because it's Congress we're going to be declaring war on. We're going to actually arrest them. Uh, but in this case, uh, my first order uh, would be for the military forces. Um, and that, that order is going to be essential 
to determining which side of the fence the military is on. Because my first order when I'm commander in chief will be for them to fix our country, they have to arrest all the members of the government who have participated in the coup and any of them who are part of the war or financial crimes that have been committed on the people of this nation and other nations. Uh, I would uh, therefore call first on the military to arrest the members of the government where clear evidence supports their arrest for either the war or financial crimes blind to which party they belong to. Um, so Republican, Democrat, Tea Party, Independent, whoever you were, if you were involved, we're going to arrest you. If you approve war funds uh, illegally, we're going to arrest you. That's sedition. These are very, very serious charges and allegations that will levy with this campaign. Um, we're going to take another commercial break here and be back with you in a moment. Okay, we're back, um, and uh, we're back with uh, Elliot Bernstein's presidential um, campaign agenda uh, for 2012, and we left off uh, with arresting Congress and the three branches of the government and all the people involved in the coup on the United States. Um, we're asking the military to make those arrest as I the first order I give the first day of my presidency uh, will be to the military to arrest uh, all those involved in the coup um, and this is going back all the way to the Bush v. Gore election fraud uh, that was done with intent to overtake our country by the Supreme Court so they would also need to be tried here too uh, all the members that were involved, I, you know, Sandra Day ran off the court and others died and uh, and anybody who has been involved in any of these decisions about torture, or cases involving fraud and crimes and regulation and the, the election fraud is really where the Supreme Court needs to be tried. Uh, that is a crime of treason. Um, if the elections were rigged by the Supreme Court and Bush v. Gore, then everything in our country from that point invalidates. Everybody who's been put into government loses their job overnight. By the way, that'll save us a fortune right off the bat. Um, and all their judges that were appointed and all their cronies that were appointed into different departments to derail regulation, all those people would be thrown out of government tomorrow uh, if I'm your president. Um, all, all of those people would then need to be tried. Um, some in military for the war crime uh, tribunals and some in uh, civil courts and criminal courts for the financial crimes, etc., uh, which could be called financial terrorism. And since it was all done through fraud, uh, again, remember, um, if we try them, we recover the stolen funds, the country, all those trillions of dollars are flushed back into the country that were stolen for the 1% to get so rich that they become kings in their own minds. Uh, and all that would be distributed back to the people, like any terrorist group, like Nazi Germany. We wiped out the Nazi government. Germany survived, obviously. And we rebooted. And we took all the stolen loot and we stole it, I think. I'm not exactly sure uh, what happened to it all. A lot of the money came into the United States with the Nazis we imported into the United States through, again, operations such as Paperclip. And there were some 30 or so of those operations conducted where we smuggled Nazis in. In fact, one of those was at the Pope's house. You can check out his Wikipedia page, Benedict uh, Ratzinger. Uh, he, uh, in his biography on Wikipedia, um, admits that the U.S. set up operations in his home uh, to do what? He was a Luftwaffe pilot, the Pope. Um, he deserted his troops. This is all in his Wikipedia page. But anyways, he's been doing a whole lot of this stuff. He illegally cooed the church. Uh, you've got this coup infiltrating other countries. So 
uh, any but anywhere where there was a country where there was an elitist group that could be convinced to join the New World Order and subvert their people, they joined in and, and countries like England and France and other countries have now become part of the uh, evil axis, we'll call them, uh, because this time our country is Germany, Nazi America, we'll call it, uh, right now, complete with torture chambers and concentration camps where people are dying, like I said. And so, you know, Nazi America is a good description of what our country is right now, um, which I'm willing to change if you vote me in as your president, which uh, hopefully I'll have some teeth before then. Um, uh, I'll prove as well that the coups infiltrated both the Republican, Democratic, and Tea parties at the top um, and my campaign will make it clear that a total cleansing of the parties, of the guilty parties within the parties, will bring those parties back to their traditional political uh, functions within our democracy or our democratic republic. Um, all of these people, again, need to be tried, convicted, or vindicated uh, through due process in an impartial, fair, unconflicted, unfettered court of law by prosecutors who have no uh, affiliation with the coup, who aren't being arrested, so new people to uphold the law against the people who broke the law. Um, and since we're a country of law, and once our law is returned from the hands of the tyrants, the country will regain its great name worldwide. We will again rise to a great nation. Our jobs will come back. Our manufacturing will come back. All of these things will come back to the people from the hands of the tyrannous few. And you can see who they are by their net worths. Uh, just take a look at whose net worths have jumped up and then say if we recapture all that money from all of them that are convicted this country is going to be back in black faster than you can say back in black and that'll be part of my second step to economic recovery through RICO and recovery now remember they're going to try to tell you now oh we need to tighten our belt because we have bankrupted the country and now we're going to cut programs and people out of government jobs who have been there for 30 years and their pensions are going to be reduced. And this is all because of this financial calamity we caused you. Uh, but we're going to fix it for you. So you're now going to allow the criminals who bankrupted America to fix America and trust them. Uh, normally at that point, if you worked in my company, I'd fire you if you bankrupted the company. I wouldn't bonus you on the way out the door. And believe me, we'll recover all those bonuses from all those people because they were bonusing themselves not through true profiting the companies and the shareholders but by crime and screwing the shareholders and screwing the people and everything else all criminal uh, you gotta keep asking yourself no arrests on Wall Street uh, all little you know side shows going on while trillions of dollars were lifted from the people and now they're moving it to other countries again with RICO will penetrate that uh, I think the other countries will will comply uh, as the coup breaks apart. And it's breaking apart. Believe me, George Bush and Cheney and all these guys didn't want to get caught with war crimes while they were in office. If you get out of office when you're caught, it's called a conspiracy theory. If you're caught while you're in office, and this goes back historically, you're called guilty and usually it's off with your head when the people realize that you've committed crimes against them. Um, and, and I presume that's what's coming to this coup, no matter how much they try to puff their New World Order chest and tell you that they're going to annihilate 90% of the population because we're overpopulated and they don't have enough oil and money. Of course, they haven't figured out who's going to work for them yet, uh, who's going to clean an elitist toilet if there's only elitists left. And they're so inbred already that they're mongrel in sense. And, you know, because really when you're a coopster like Hitler, the people that you can bring into your heinous crimes, like the camps and stuff, are usually relatives, where you can brainwash your children to believe these sick things, and then you you couldn't go to dinner and and talk about this openly and honestly because other people look at you like say, "What? You're going to put people in ovens and kill all these people? What are you nuts?" 
So you have to pray upon.